The connections between the experience face and the other faces are what can help prevent these tragic user experiences and also can, what can help us understand where the opportunities are to create amazingly better ones. So how do we add this face to the cube? How do you add this face to your organizations? Ben mentioned mental models. Who's familiar with mental model diagrams? So this is a mental model diagram. For those of you who haven't seen it, the top of the diagram represents the experience that the, or the ac actions and the tasks and the emotions in some cases that the user is uh, undergoing in a particular circumstance in their life. And the bottom of the diagram re represents all of the touch points across all different channels that can be mapped to those tasks. And so you can go out in the world and you can do observations and contextual inquiries and, and uh, build up this model of the tasks and activities that your users or, or customers are undertaking, and then you can inventory all of your touch points, right? Um, count them all up, um, and then start to map. Yes, this touch point is in place because it satisfies this task for the user. Uh, friend of mine, Indy Young, uh, former founder, partner of Adaptive Path, uh, wrote, literally wrote the book on mental models. If you haven't uh, read this book or got a copy of this book, I highly recommend it because mental models, although they've been around when Indy first coined them uh, 20 years ago, they were used primarily for uh, creating uh, kind of information architectures of websites. Uh, they're actually far more useful um, to help your organizations uh, think about what it is your organization does because you can use them to map all of your users' activities and their thoughts and their goals in all of these life scenarios to all of your touch points, the front face of the cube, and through those touch points to all of the other faces of the cube, to the business processes, the business rules, the projects, everything else. So what does this look like? If we zoom in on marriage for a second, I realize you can't read the words, it's fine. Um, I'd have to kill you if you read the words, it's all right. Um, Across the top here, we've got, uh, this is a small chunk of what the, the overall model for marriage would look like. Um, and across the top, you've got tasks like, you know, uh, find a ring, buy a ring, finance a ring, insure a ring, pop the question, plan the reception, you know, you know plan the honeymoon, go on, have the reception, go on the honeymoon, et cetera, et cetera. And across the bottom, we've got all the different channels. And you can start to then start, you can start to measure the touch points as they map to the tasks and how effective they're being, right? The green ones are going well based on some measure, the red ones not so much, so you can start to use it to figure out what you should focus on. What you can also do, though, is connect to the cube. So you can zoom in on a particular touch point, and you, now you can start to see, so this is probably one of thousands, tens of thousands that the organization has, you know, bill pay on mobile, for example. And now you can start to see how it's connected to the rest of the organization, the rest of the cube. Which products is it connected to? Check an account. What life cycle phase is it connected to? Servicing, not acquisition or awareness or consideration. Right? What business processes are powering this touch point from behind? What business rules are powering this touch point? What advice are you giving people through this touch point? What projects are touching this touch point and trying to improve it over time? Or maybe there's a couple of projects trying to touch the same touch point completely unaware of each other. I don't know about how that works in your organizations, but it happens in my organizations all the time. And maybe if those two projects knew about each other, they could collaborate and gain some efficiencies, or at the very least, the second one could not undo what the first one does. This gives a, a framework and a language for collaboration. And that's important because the second thing around connections was connecting people. And, and people generally work in teams. And teams need a shared language. They need to be able to communicate effectively. I don't know how many meetings I've been in where we've been uh, violently talking about uh, something for half an hour and then realized, you know, half an hour in, oh, that's what you're talking about. That's what I'm talking about. We're talking about the same thing. You know, interesting. We could only realize that after five minutes instead of 30 minutes. Teams also need, and I, I, I swear, I'm not a football fan, so I don't know why I put two football ex examples in the same uh, slide deck. I, I don't know, but uh, this is the last one. 
Um, teams also need alignment around shared goals and common objectives. Most of our organizations operate in business unit silos that have grown up because of some internal uh, processes or systems or products. Many of our organizations are pivoting towards kind of product-oriented silos, but even they don't really necessarily reflect the true experience that users are having. An example here is uh, a USAA example, where I was until about 18 months ago. So USAA's bank was organized prior to two, two and a half years ago the way every other bank organizes, which is directly reporting up to the president. You have P&L groups that are responsible for, you know, one responsible for the, the checking account, one responsible for the savings account, credit card, auto loans, home loans, investing, et cetera. But two years ago, two and a half years ago, they decided to truly embrace more of an experiential organization. So now they got rid of product owners. They don't have product owners and product managers in the bank at USA anymore. They have experience owners. And the people that report directly up to the president, now there's a daily spending experience owner who reports directly up to the president with a team around them. And that person is responsible not only for the checking account, but also for daily spending on the credit card. And not just for the experience or the product, but for everything. They're the CEO of that experience. They're responsible for the risk, the compliance, the third-party suppliers, the profit and loss, the pricing, everything, and the experience. So, connecting ideas, we create maps. We can understand our users by going out and talking, by observing, by listening. We can inventory our touch points and we can map the two together and through those touch points we can understand how we're being impacted by the rest of the business. So we can start to see where, you know, butterfly flaps its wings deep in the bowels of a process uh, department over here. We can start to understand the chain of events that then leads that to either a positive or negative experience from a customer perspective. I use the kind of on, on stage, off stage metaphor there, right? The touch points being the on stage, everything else the business does, the rest of the queue being the off stage. And we can use that to help create and form our teams around a common language and around experiences as shared goals. The why, why is this important? So we'll go right back to what I mentioned at the beginning of the, uh, the talk. It's important because organizations really need to, or design, our design teams really need to have more of a strategic impact to organizations. At, so at Capital One, we have a 450 person design team. So we were one of the last groups standing up when Miles asked us to do that yesterday. And that's been built up over three or four years. And we're quite adept at partnering with our product and engineering teams across all the different lines of business to create great you know, mobile apps and websites and physical interactions and, and other uh, channel touch points. And we do that in a fairly strategic way. We help those teams figure out what they should be and their capabilities and we do design thinking stuff and we get out there and all that kind of stuff. But we haven't really been successful yet at influencing the direction the business is going. Capital One is a 50,000 person organization. It's a fairly young and nimble organization in the scheme of financial services. It's only 25, 26 years old. And we pivot quite quickly. But those pivots generally come from our senior executive team and their business strategy groups. And there have been a number of pivots over the years as Capital One has decided to get into different uh, lines of business and broaden itself from credit cards and, and think about international and, and, and uh, expand itself. But I believe that the next pivot we need to make 
is much more of an experiential one. And the design team, which we call One Design at Capital One, the design team needs to be very, very involved and influential and even driving that change. If we don't do that, we won't be able to create far more meaningful experiences for our customers.